Good morning, I've come out to my local woodland to do a test of the KNF Concept Nano Series uh, variable ND filter. I was going to do something by a waterfall or like a stream, but I don't know, that's a bit cliche. I figured I would actually just come and test it in a completely normal environment. Just a quick disclaimer, KNF Concept uh, sent this to me for free to review. Um, I didn't pay for it using my own money. That doesn't mean I'm going to be uh, extra kind on it. I'm just going to review it exactly how I see it. Let's crack it open, shall we? Really impressed with the packaging and presentation. Seems really, really well made, well designed. It feels like a like a high-end product. The filter itself comes in this sort of leather pouch. It's got like a magnetic latch and inside we have the filter itself. So this is actually the first time I've ever used a variable ND filter. Uh, I've used ND filters a lot in general, uh, but never a variable one. So what I mean by variable is, as you're looking into the filter, as you move the glass around, you can see it becomes darker. So what this means is you only need to carry one ND filter. You don't need to carry sort of like a, uh, you know, a three stop, a five stop, a 10 stop. It goes from ND2 to ND400. ND2 is one stop of light reduction. ND400 is eight and two thirds of a stop. Uh, anyway, enough faffing around and talking let's actually go and use it. So what I'm gonna try and find is just a really plain scene with lots of detail because I'm going to be looking for things like clarity, so uh, how, how it affects the, the sharpness of the image, density, so how accurate the actual light reduction is, and color cast, so if it affects the color tone of the image, for example, introduces sort of warm tones or cooler tones, so I'm gonna keep the white balance the exact same. Let's go and find a scene and let's do some testing. around this woodland for about 40 minutes trying to find a scene that I thought was worth getting the camera out for. This is gonna have to do a couple of mossy trees. They kind of stand out there. Their trunks are like a light brown with sort of like a pinkish tint to them. This is as good a place as any to test a filter. I'm not trying to take a masterpiece photo here. So let's get set up. Uh, the shot that I'm gonna aim for is these three trees here. One, two, three. Portrait orientation. Um, and fairly sort of medium shot, probably around 50 millimeters. Uh, I'm gonna have the uh, aperture around F8 because I'm trying to increase sharpness. I'm gonna keep the ISO at about 200, 400, and I'm gonna be changing the shutter speed to get the exposure that I want while I'm using that filter. So, let's get started. Okay, so my closing thoughts before I get back in the car and get the images onto the camera. Build quality, presentation, brilliant. As I would expect from KNF Concept. The thread on the filter, it isn't as precise as I would like. There is a bit of a, a tug as you're screwing it onto the lens. Uh, it's just a bit stiff when you put it on. Um, it's definitely not as good as their filter holder adapters that you screw on. So another very minor thing, the lens hood won't actually fit over the filter itself. So lens hood is gonna to have to come off, which I think is a shame. A lens hood is a sort of a vital part. This is a problem because it will introduce lens flare in very sunny conditions, which sometimes you like, but sometimes you don't want. A lens hood is added protection. You drop your lens or your camera and it lands on the lens hood. The lens hood smashes, that's 20 quid to replace it versus, you know, 600 pounds for the lens or, or even more. From what I can tell with regards to the color cast, uh, it seems like it introduces a bit of warmth to the image, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I've had filters in the past where the color cast is so strong that it kills the color in the image and is very, very difficult to get back in post. I don't see initially any issues with sharpness or anything like that. Now, density is the problem. Density 
uh, is how much light this actually stops from coming into the lens. So it's got eight of these dots and these dots start at ND2 and go up to ND400. As I said, that's about eight and two thirds stops. So one would think that each of these dots indicates a stop, right? So ND2 is one stop, eight stop, okay? That's what one would expect, but it doesn't seem like that's the case, right? So instead of it starting here, and as you move it up, it goes up like this. So it's a, a linear progression. It's like a curve. So at the bottom, it starts like this. And then at the top, it goes like this, right? Does that make sense? So basically the, the, the filter gets progressively darker as you get towards the end of these dots. So right in the middle, it's not as dark as you would expect it to be. It's about half as dark as you would expect it to be. And then as you get to the top, it, it really ramps up. Um, quite hard to explain. Hopefully the image images do the talking. The thing is, if I want accuracy, I'm going to get a proper ND filter, right? So if I want a 10 stop filter, I'm going to buy a 10 stop filter. I'm not going to buy a, a variable filter that does all of it because that's just not what I'm looking for. This is this is comparable to one of those lenses that, that is like a super zoom, right? So it's like, I don't know, like a 24 to 250 lens. You know, that lens is great if you just want to carry one lens and have the entire focal range covered. Now, that lens is going to be less sharp. The color reproduction is going to be as good. The build quality is probably not going to be as good because you're you're trying to get all of it in. If I want if I want a 10 stop filter, I'm going to get a 10 stop filter. If I want a three stop filter, I'm going to get a three stop filter. But if I don't want to carry six different filters in my bag, this will do. I've already got to screw something onto the front of the lens. If I screw this on, it's not that much different to screwing on an adapter ring, putting on the adapter, slotting in a square filter. So this isn't actually that much easier. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. Let's get back to the computer. Let's have a look at the images and we'll give our final verdict there. Let's look at the control image again. And the first thing to compare is clarity. I see no discernible difference between the two images with regards to clarity. I would say the filter does seem to have a slight polarizing effect on the image, which reduces some of the glare, but that's all. Next up is comparing color. As you can see, the slight warming tone it adds isn't terrible and is really easily fixed in post-processing. Besides, sometimes a warming tone can be quite pleasant, and I certainly am guilty of adding a bit of warmth to a lot of my shots. Finally, let's take a look at density. Each of the following shots was taken by rotating the ring by one dot and then reducing the exposure down by one stop. If the filter's light reduction was linear, each image would look basically the same with regards to exposure, but as you can see that is not the case. I would also say it's closer to 7 stops of exposure reduction rather than the advertised 8 and 2 thirds, and the exposure reduction is non-linear which makes it difficult to gauge just how much to adjust exposure by without checking your camera's internal light meter. It's not necessarily a problem per se, it just didn't work how I expected it to, and when out in the field it would require adjustments on the fly rather than pre-calculating and setting exposure. Finally, something I noticed was that when you near the maximum amount of light reduction, the filter can be slightly uneven when rotating the variable ring, meaning if you're not careful you won't get completely even coverage. Again, not necessarily a problem, just something to be aware of when taking a shot to avoid a weird vignette. Okay, final verdict. Let's start with the bad. The filter is just not accurate to 8 and 2 thirds light reduction. You can see the shots demonstrate this. Additionally, the fact that the light reduction is a non-linear curve means that it's not as easy to specifically select, say, three stops of light reduction. The filter thread was a little grabby, admittedly a bit picky, and you can't use your lens hood with it. And finally, the weird vignetting you get towards the darkest setting is a bit annoying and you have to be careful with it. Now, all that said, on to the good. The build quality and presentation is absolutely brilliant. It feels like a really good quality piece of kit and the case is really nice too. The colour cast is basically non-existent with minor post-processing required and the clarity is very good, seemingly not affecting sharpness at all. Now would I buy it? This is a difficult question to answer honestly because I've never wanted a variable ND filter. Typically I do landscape photography and I shoot very much carefully considered scenes where I'm happy to take a lot of time composing and waiting. 
I can imagine this being really useful in varying light conditions where you want to keep your camera settings mostly the same. Or I can imagine this being really useful if you want to travel super light and have a filter that can cover a wide range of densities. I don't have other variable ND filters to compare to, but in the same way I would say not to expect the same quality out of an ultra zoom lens compared to a prime, I would say not to expect the same quality out of a variable ND filter compared to a square ND filter. But I would say that if you're in the market for a variable ND filter, this one is pretty good and I would recommend it. KNF Concept currently are selling a bunch of kit during Amazon Prime Day, or alternatively you can go direct to their website. Both the links in the description.